In the last video, I made these five different character base models. In this one, I'm going to take this base mesh and build off of it to make this character right here. If you like character modeling, I have a challenge going on right now sponsored by XP Pen. Submit your character on my Discord server, and if you get first place, XP Pen will send you one of their Deco L drawing tablets. You can find more info about the challenge on Discord or in this video right here. Also, check my Patreon for all the project files from my videos, coupon codes for free Gumroad products, and stuff I don't share anywhere else. I recently made this felt material with geometry nodes and shared the file over there. I sometimes post early access videos over there too, and I donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. Links for everything are in the description. Here's a summary of what I'll cover. I'll start by bringing in the base mesh from the other video, as well as a reference that I drew. I'll go through each part of the base mesh and alter stuff until the shapes match a little closer eventually adding more detail for things like the sleeves. Parts like the pants, shirt, shoes, and hat will be new objects, but it won't be too much work since this character is pretty simple and uses the subdivision surface modifier to make it seem more complex. Once everything is modeled, I'll add materials to give things some color. Parts of this video will be time lapses, so it's not exactly a step-by-step -step tutorial, but I will explain how I did everything. I'm also not going to cover rigging or how I created the environment from this picture. If that's something you're all interested in, let me know and I'll consider making videos like that. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so here we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.1 for this one, but um, there aren't too many like 3.1 specific features. So if you're using an older version, you know, you should be able to follow along just fine. So first, I'm going to bring in the base mesh from our previous video. So if you followed along with that, you know, follow these steps. If you didn't follow along and you want this base mesh, then you should go watch that video. So I'm just going to go to File, Append, and then track down that file. So in the file, I'm just going to go to Collection, and I'm going to append the first character collection right here. And it should just bring it right in. So all of these objects have the origin point in the same spot right here. So if we just select everything and hit Alt-G, it should bring everything to the center right here. If that doesn't work for you, you might have to move things around a little bit to get them in the right position. Next, I'm just going to bring in a reference that I drew. This part is completely optional. I just have mine right here, and I'm just going to drag and drop it in like that. I can reset the rotation and location with Alt-G and Alt-R, and then I'll just rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis and just put it somewhere where I don't think it'll get in the way too much. I'll put it like next to it over here. So if we look at the reference, you can see there are some things that are a little different. Um, mainly the head shape is a little different. So I'll just come into the head right here, go into edit mode. And I think it might be easier to just add a new head. So I'm just gonna select everything and delete it with X and then shift A and add in a plane and drag it up here. Um, and because I deleted it in edit mode, it should have all of the, you know, modifiers that it had before, the subdivision surface modifier. So I can just, you know, scale this down and extrude it up. And I'll go into x-ray mode right here. And just so I can see through a little better, I'm going to turn on a matte cap. So I'll turn the matte cap on and select this normals one. So I'll just try to get a shape similar to this. The bottom should be pretty wide. I'm just, you know, selecting things and scaling them. I can add some loop cuts to define the shape a little better, and I'll add one at the top. Let's check it from the side. I think maybe from the side I would like it to be a little flatter, so I'll just scale it on the y-axis a little. I think that looks pretty good. Let's move on to the legs. So for the legs, I'm gonna model these um, facing in a different direction. I want them to be rotated facing forward, but you can see when we do that, the mirror modifier is kind of messing up. Um, that's because we need to set the mirror object to something that's in the middle. I'll just set that to the head. And now when we rotate it, um, it's using the head as the mirror object. So it should work just fine. I'll just rotate it negative 90 degrees on the Z axis. And we can just, uh, you know, push it to the side a little like that. Hit three to look from the side and just move that back to the middle. And I am going to split the legs and the, the shoes into two separate objects. I can just come in here and I'll just select some of these right here and delete the vertices with X. Then I'll select this loop right here with a uh, Alt Shift and left click. Nope, this one, no, that one right here and Control X to dissolve that. Then we can select this one and hit F and that should just close it off. Now we can make this as skinny or as thick as we want. 
and our reference, um, this guy right here, has pretty thin legs. So I'll just go through and make these quite a bit thinner. Make sure you're in x-ray mode so you're actually selecting all of the points. And I think I'll delete this one right here too with control X to, dis to dissolve it. And I want to tighten up the top and the bottom so make sure you're in face select mode. Select that top face and just inset that a little bit. And I can do the same thing for the bottom part of the leg right there. Later on, we will create these ripples right there too. Now let's create the shoes. So I want to keep all of these same modifiers. So I'll just duplicate this leg right here. And then we can delete everything in edit mode. And that way we can reuse all of these modifiers. Back in object mode, I'm just going to hit Alt and G to bring that to the center right there. And then I'll go in edit mode and add in a plane like that. And I'll just scale it down quite a bit. Then in object mode, again, I'll just drag it over here. You want to make sure you're dragging it uh, in object mode so that the origin is in the right spot. And I'll just place that below the leg right here. Now back in edit mode, we can just model the shape of the shoe. It looks like it's kind of pinched at the ankle right here, pretty small. And then it flares out at the top. And we also have pretty pointy toes. So that's the shape we're going for. So I'll just extrude that up, scale it down quite a bit at the ankle right there, extrude that upward pretty close to the knee, scale that out. So I want the top to be open, so I'm actually just going to delete this top face right here. You can hit X and choose face, and then it will be open at the top. If you want this to have some thickness, you can just add a solidify modifier, and I'll just change the thickness to half this, so 0.005 and that's just half the thickness right there. I'll drag it out a little like that, maybe pull it back a little too. And we can tighten this up a little with a loop cut right here. The closer you bring this loop, the tighter it will be. I will extrude this front face for the foot. I'll just extrude that on the Y axis right there. Just wanna go into edge select, bring this front part down quite a bit, and we can scale this in also to make this a little pointier and maybe scale the back part down just slightly. And if we want, we can bring that out too. Um, if you want the bottom to be a little sharper, usually what I do for that is just select the bottom faces and inset them like that. Just don't inset it too far or you'll, or you'll get some uh, overlapping points right here. And then if that's too tight, then I'll scale it from there, maybe like that. And I'll scale it back up a little on the Y axis just to make it a little more even around the edges. I think maybe I should make the feet a little shorter. I'll just select these points and drag them down and see how that looks. So our leg is poking through just a little, so we should adjust that slightly. So I'll just grab these and maybe scale them down just a little and bring them up slightly. All right, I think the legs are maybe a little closer together, so I'll just select the legs and the shoes, bring them a little closer like that. And I am also going to make the body a little more narrow. So select this scale that and hit shift Z so it's not scaling on the Z axis. We can just bring that in as far as we want. I don't like how the head is disconnected so I'll just select the top right here and extrude that up to create kind of like a, a little neck I guess. So we can rename this shoes to stay organized. Next I'll create the sleeves right here but first I might just scale down the tip right here to make it a little more narrow like we see there. So control A on that and now if we want to add the sleeves directly to the arms, which I'm going to do instead of creating like a separate object, uh, we need to apply the skin modifier. So I'll come in here and apply the skin modifier like that. And now if we go into edit mode, we actually have access to all the faces and whatnot. So I'll just add in a loop cut with control R and just bring it pretty close like that. And I'll scale that up quite a bit. Now I'll take this edge right here, go into x-ray mode, and I'll just drag it kind of through like that, scale it down a little. And you can see it's kind of creating like this, uh, this sleeve shape, like a bell almost. And if you want to tighten this up so it's like more sharp, we can just add a loop cut like that and just scale that down, place it where we want it. So it's just adding a little more thickness. And we can do the same thing to add some sharpness in here if we want. If you don't want to add more geometry, you can just select that loop, hit N, and go to item up here and turn the mean crease up and that will sharpen it quite a bit. I'll just set that to 0.5. I want there to be a little more defined kind of like seam right here. Maybe I will add a loop cut right here. Then I'll turn this crease up maybe to like 0.5, something like that. And 
scale that up just slightly. Now we have this slight crease right there, and I think that looks pretty good. It looks like a sleeve. So next I'll add the ripples on the legs right here. So to add some definition, we should probably apply the subdivision surface modifier because when we come into it, this is all we have to work with. So usually what I like to do is turn off optimal display so that when you go into uh, to wireframe mode, you can actually see what's going on. And I'll just turn this down a little, maybe to like two right here, and then I'll apply that. And if you want this to be smooth again, you can add another subdivision surface modifier with control two. That will just add, you know, two uh, levels right there. Then I'll come into edit mode and I'm just going to bevel this with control B and I'll add as many loops as I think we need. So if I add one, that's going to create like one uh, ripple. Three will create two. So I'll add two more and that should be enough for three. Now we can just come into edit mode and start scaling some of these out. So alt and left click to select loops and you can just scale them out like that. Then I'll select these two and scale those out just a little. Hit Shift Z so it's not scaling up and down. Just make it a little ripply so it looks like the pants are kind of bunching up a little. So next I would like to make the pants and the shirt. So instead of creating entirely new geometry for those, I think it would be easier to just duplicate this and then build on top of it. So I'll duplicate this and this is going to be the pants, so I'll just rename it pants. And I'm going to apply the subdivision surface modifier so we have more geometry to work with. So I'm just going to hide the body for now and go into wireframe up here and hit optimal display. And I'll just turn this down until it looks like we have a good amount of detail. Maybe three subdivisions, and then I'll apply that. If you want, you can add another one on top once again just to smooth it back out. Go into edit mode, and I'm just going to delete um, all these points up here until it's about at the level where we want the pants to be. So make sure you're in uh, x-ray for this so you're you know actually deleting both sides. And I'm just going to hit control plus on the numpad to expand the selection until I think it looks good. Maybe at this point right here, hit x and delete the faces. Now we can turn the body back on and I'm going to add a solidify right here to give it some thickness. And I'm also going to right click and shade flat just so we can actually see all the faces right there. So now if you want, you can dial in the thickness and the offset like that. Um, I'm gonna not push it all the way to one, leave it somewhere close to the middle. So when you have the thickness the way you like it, you can apply the solidify. And now we can come in here and just start building things up. So first I'm gonna create this kind of like fly area and then I'll create the belt loops. And instead of just like extruding things, I'm actually going to be selecting faces, hit three or, you know, go into face select mode and just select all the faces you want. We can just duplicate that and then I'll extrude it like that. And we can get the shape that we want. So I'll select this edge right here and drag it inward a little. And if you want this to be a little sharper, you can add loop cuts along the side like that. And if you want, you can make it sharper at the top too. If you don't like where the loop cut landed, you can hit G twice to slide it again. And now we can just select the whole thing by hovering over and hitting L like that and just drag it in to where you want it like that. Now we can do a similar thing for all the belt loops and we can just select the parts that we want for our belt loops. And I'm just going into X-ray mode to compare both sides like that. Now I'll add two more on the back Okay, so now that I have all of these, I should be able to just shift a D to duplicate them like that. And I'm going to hit Alt E and extrude faces along normals. Just extrude it a little bit like that. And then I'll do the same thing. Alt E, extrude faces along normals. And this is kind of like how we added the loop cut right there um, for our fly, except I didn't have to individually do it to each one. We can just, you know, select them with L like this. You can just go around and hit L select all of them. We'll just scale it uh, and hit shift Z so it's not being scaled up and down and we can just pull those in a little and I'll also drag that down very slightly. So now this looks a little like some belt loops and I want to add kind of like a, um, like a waistband area. Hit alt shift and left click and select this entire loop, these top two loops and I'll extrude those with alt E, extrude faces along normals and extrude that out very slightly. If we want, we could add another loop right here to make it even more defined. That's up to you. And you might have to come in here and 
you know, you could either select this whole top loop, I guess it's t these top two loops right here. There's one right there and one right here, and just drag both of those down until they're at the level that you want. I'll create the button as a separate object. So shift A, bring in a plane right here, go into edit mode, rotate this by 90 degrees on the X right there, scale this down quite a bit. I'll add a uh, subdivision surface modifier, and then we can extrude this outward. And I'll add a loop cut in the middle. So we have this kind of like soft cylinder kind of shape. Now I want to place this right up here. I'll just change the snapping options up here. Instead of increment, I'll change this to face and I'll set this to median. If we hit G and drag this around, we can hit control and it'll snap to whatever we're pointing it at. You can see it snapped the origin point like right on the face right here. I want this to cut in a little more, so I'll actually reset the origin. I'll right click, set origin, and origin to center of mass, this one right here. And we can try that again. You know, scale this up as much as you want, and then we can just rotate this. And I'll rename this button. So now we should be able to work on our shirt too. So. Once again, I will select the body and duplicate that so we have a separate mesh for our shirt. I will again add a solidify modifier, maybe set the offset to zero so it sticks out a little. You might need to dial in the thickness so that it's not clipping into the pants too much. Hit shift Z to go into wireframe mode and turn off optimal display. And we'll just turn this down to this point right here and apply it. And I'll add another subdivision surface on top with control two. I'll just delete some of these top faces right here. We can delete all those X faces. Now we have a little bit of a collar and we don't really need all of these faces down here. So I'll delete all of these ones. X and faces. Now in edit mode, we can just select some of these faces and to select them a little easier, we can hit this button right here and it just makes it a little easier to control. What I want to do is kind of split these edges in the front so that we can open it up and have it look a little more like a collar. Make sure you're an edge select and we can just select the edges that we want, right click and edge split like that. Now uh, these should not be co connected anymore and we should be able to just select one of these and then control click and that'll just choose the shortest path. And when we do that, we should be able to split it like that. Um, we can also do proportional editing. So if you go up here and click this button or hit O to turn that on and off, I'll just change this to connected only and I'll change this to sharp. And now we should be able to you know, move this um, and use the scroll wheel to change the area of influence like that. It's important that if you wanna split it apart like this that you have connected only checked, otherwise it will grab the other side also. So we can split that apart now. And if you want, you can do that on the other side also. Just select this loop right here and scale that up a little so that it's not too close to the body. You know, just get this to a spot where you think it looks good, basically. And if we want, we can add some buttons too. That's easy, we can just duplicate this. And once again, um, when it's moving around, you can just hit control to snap it to the surface. Instead of just one, I think I'll add two. Select both of these, period, individual origins. We can scale those down a little like that. And I'll just make sure that the scale is reset for all of these, or uh, applied rather, control A, and then apply the scale. And if it seems like the body is clipping into it, and I believe it is, then we can just select the body and maybe I'll just drag this in slightly so it's not clipping through like that. So let's make the hat. For this, I'll add in a plane with Shift A, Mesh, Plane, and I'll add a subdivision surface modifier. Drag that up a little bit. Now we'll go into edit mode and just extrude that up, scale it in, and extrude that up again. And just like the boots, I'm gonna delete this bottom face so that it looks open like that. Now we're gonna have to adjust this size quite a bit, maybe a little wider than the head like that. And we can add a loop cut at the top to get it a little tighter. Let's just scale this in a little bit. And you know, this one is pretty simple. We don't need to do too much to it. If we want, we could add a solidify for this also. Go from the side and place this and because we have the origin point right here, because we moved it in object mode, we should be able to rotate it pretty easily like that. So I'll move it back just a little. And that looks pretty good. 
So now let's make the eyes, and we're going to do this a little differently. We're going to use the lattice modifier for this, um, and I'll explain why as I do it. But we're going to start off with just a UV sphere. So come up here, UV sphere, and then in edit mode, and rotate that 90 degrees on the x-axis. And we'll just scale this down until it's close to the size of our eye, basically close to the width of our eye right here. I'll bring it forward a little just so we can, you know, see it without the shoes interfering. And I'm going to duplicate this. This is going to be our eyelid. So over here, I'll name this eye, and this will be the lid. And then in edit mode, I'll rotate this 90 degrees again, just like that. And I'll just delete some of the bottom faces right here, just like half of them. And on the lid, I will add a solidify modifier. Change the offset so it's pushing outward like that. And this should make an eyelid that's pretty easy to, uh, to position. So for the people, I'm actually just going to select this center uh, point right here and hit Control X to expand this. And I'll go into face select mode, and maybe expand it one more. And I'll just extrude this out just a little bit. And this is going to be our, our pupil right here, or like the iris, basically the darker color of our eye. Obviously, this looks different compared to over here because it's not as like stretched out and oblong. Um, I am going to select both of these and hit Alt-G to reset the location. And then I'll add in a lattice with Shift-A down here, lattice. And we can just scale this down until it's pretty close. Now I want to add a lattice modifier on the eye and the eyelid. So add the lattice modifier. That's for the eye. Have to do the same thing for the eyelid like that. And for both of those, you just want to select the lattice. There should only be one thing to select because we only have one lattice in our scene. And now if you click on the lattice and go into edit mode, you can move these points around and it should modify the eye right here. So I'll just select everything and scale that up on the Z like that. I'm also going to select the eye and shift select the eyelid and then select the lattice last and hit control P and parent those so that when we move the lattice, all the eyes and stuff will follow. Now we can just place this where we want the eyes to be. Hover over here and hit and uh, hold control. Scale all of this up like that. We can also add the mirror modifier to this so that it actually mirrors to the other side. So I'll add the mirror. I'll place that before the lattice and select the head as the mirror object. We can do the same thing for the eyelid. Now we'll just position these where we want. So maybe a little wider. Now, if you want to adjust the shape in here um, and you want more than just this box right here, uh, you can go down here to Object Data Properties, the little lattice symbol, and you can change the resolution in here. Um, I personally, I don't think it needs more for this shape, but you can do that if you want. Also, if you want to reset this, you can you know, select everything, go up to Lattice and make regular, and that will just snap it back to its box shape, I believe. I think maybe I'll flatten it a little on the Y axis. You might be wondering why I'm using the lattice for this. Um, and this is because it makes uh, rigging the eyes a lot easier when they're not perfectly spherical. If I wasn't using the lattice for this um, and I rotated it, um, it would rotate it as this shape. But because I'm putting the lattice at the very end, it's like rotating first and deforming second. I haven't made a video about eye rigs yet. I am planning on doing that eventually, but I want to research it a little more. If that's something you are interested in, uh, make sure to leave a comment below telling me. This also works pretty well for the eyelids too, so you can rotate the eyelids on the x-axis and, you know, it kind of morphs in a way that keeps it clean. I guess the last thing we need for this character is the mouth right here. I'm gonna have to apply this again. So shift Z, turn off optimal display. I'll turn the viewport levels down maybe to two right here, and then I'll apply that. Just to smooth it back out again, I'll add another subdivision surface modifier with control two. Now I should be able to come in here and I'll just select these two uh, faces right there and inset with I like that. And I'll scale that on the x-axis, and it looks like this is kind of pinching in a little too much, so I'll just select the edges right here and pull those out a little until it looks a little flatter. Now we can just select these faces and extrude those on the y-axis a little. We can also scale this on the y by zero to flatten it out if we want, like that. 
and I'll extrude it on the y-axis one more time just to make the mouth go a little deeper. The first extrusion right here, um, that's just making it like kind of sharper at the front. You can see when I slide it back, it'll get kind of like rounder. So if you want this to be very uh, tight crease like that, you can just make sure that's very close to the front. If the mouth is open too much for you, you can just select the faces up here. And I'll scale that on the Z, oh, but I have to hit period and change the pivot point to median point first. And we can flatten that a little. And I'll also select the faces on the sides and make our character smile just a little more. All right, so we have the mouth now and our character is pretty much complete. I would like to make the bucket and the rake right here. So I'll create two separate objects for that. Um, I'll do the bucket first and I'll start out with a plane right here and I'll just drag that uh, over here. I'm actually going to turn on incremental snap up there and turn on absolute grid so we can get that to snap to exactly one meter to the side on the x-axis like that. I'll add a subdivision surface of three. Now I'll go in edit mode and just scale that down a little and extrude that up and I'll delete the top face. And we can add another solidify to give that some thickness. I'll just add a loop cut and scale this in. Maybe make everything more narrow. Maybe I'll scale the bottom out slightly to make the bottom a little sharper. Bring that down a little. Okay, so let's make the handle for the bucket now. So for that, I'll add in a plane and we're gonna use the skin modifier for this one. So I'll drag this over while holding control to snap it to the, you know, the same position that the bucket is. And I'll just drag this up to the point where we want it to pivot from, so right about here. Now in edit mode, I just want to scale this down on the Y axis right here by zero. So it's just a flat line and then we can scale it in so that we don't have a bunch of points on top of each other, we can select everything and hit M and merge by distance and that will merge all of the points that are sitting on top of each other. So now I want to add a subdivision surface modifier and the skin modifier and I'll add another subdivision surface at the end right here. And I just want to select everything and scale it down with control A so that it's not nearly as thick now I will extrude this on the Z axis right here, and I'm gonna delete this bottom, um, this bottom edge right here with X. This first subdivision surface modifier is going to smooth out the line right here, like that. And the second one is just going to make it more round, like that. Back in uh, vertex select mode, I just want to select both of these edges right here and extrude and hit S to scale, scale that in just a little bit, and then do the same thing. The reason I um, have this point right here is just to make it a little sharper because if we don't have that, then it will be pretty round. So I'll just scale this in about as far as I need it. And then I will extrude that on the Z axis, just a little like that. And I might bring the edges in right here, scale that on the X axis to bring it a little closer. And because the origin point is right there, if we rotate it on the X axis, um, this is really easy to position. Um, you don't have to do this, but I feel like it's good practice in case you do want to animate it. It's already, you know, it has a good pivot point. So I'll rename this handle and make sure you rename the hat also, because I think I didn't rename that one. So next we'll make the rake. For that, I am going to use the skin modifier also entirely. I'll just drag it over here to the two meter mark just so we have some room. And I'll add the skin modifier and I'll add a subdivision surface also. So in edit mode, I'll just hit A to select everything and control A to scale everything down quite a bit. And now um, I'll just make this about as wide as I think it should be. And I'll drag this edge over while holding control to snap it to that zero mark. And these ones I'll actually just delete like that. I'll select this and extrude that up on the Z just a little bit, maybe right about there extrude it up again and I'll scale that down by zero. Now this will look a little weird because we have um, some points on top of each other but if we select everything and hit M to merge by distance that should clear up. I also want to move the root from this point to this point. Um, you can see it's kind of asymmetrical right now so if we select this point right here come over to our skin modifier and hit mark root right here, then um, that should clear up. But I don't want this line right here, so select that, delete the edge. So with this, I want to extrude up to create that kind of pole, and I'll extrude it up again 
maybe to like the two meter mark right there. And you can select those last two that we just made and scale those up with control A to make it as thick as you want. And you can add a loop cut to make the transition a little more sharp right here. Just scale that down. Now we just need to add the uh, the teeth things, the, the pointy parts right here, whatever they're called. Tines? I don't know. We can do that with some loop cuts with control R right here. So we already have these two on the edges and we can put one in the middle and just use the scroll wheel. So I'll add like six maybe. So we have eight total. And now just select all of those, extrude those on the Y axis. And with that still selected, I'll hit X and delete the edges. And now we have a rake. And now that we have all of this models, we can work on the materials. So for the color, I'm gonna use a palette that I've already created. It's an image, and if you wanna download that for free, you can get that on Gumroad. I have a link in the description for it. So let's just go over to the shading workspace right here, and I'll just start with the head. So select the head, and I actually already have the palette loaded in here, so I just have to change the material to the palette right there. But to show you how to set it up, it's pretty easy. You basically just want to get a texture coordinate, plug the UV into the vector of the palette image, and you can plug the color into the base color of the principal shader. And it should look something like this. And if it looks too smooth, you just want to make sure that it's not set to linear. You want it set to closest for sharp edges like that. Um, and that's all it takes to set it up. It's a pretty, you know, there's not much going on. But with the head still selected, I will select everything and hit Control L and link the materials to add that material to everything else. Now you'll notice that some of these aren't as rainbowy, like the arms, this, and the handle. And that's because these were created with the skin modifier, so they aren't UV unwrapped already. So to fix that, we just need to, you know, click on them to see if they still have a skin modifier. This one doesn't, this one does, so we need to apply it. Just make sure that you apply it in order from top to bottom if you don't want this to get messed up. So we do need to apply this subdivision surface first apply that and then apply the skin modifier and we can apply the skin modifier over here just select all of those objects go into edit mode select everything again and hit u to unwrap and choose smart uv project i just like to set the island margin to something like 0 0.01 instead of zero so that the islands aren't touching each other you can hit ok and that will unwrap it this isn't the best way to unwrap things um, but for how we're using this palette it works just fine, so it's like the easy automatic method. So now that we have this, we can start assigning colors. So I'll just go up here and change this to the UV editor and just make sure that you have the palette image selected. If I select the head and go into edit mode and select everything over here, you can see that we have our like mesh um, being displayed, uh, unwrapped on this side. And if we select that with A, we can scale it down. I'll just scale it by zero. So everything's scaled to like the size of a single point, and we can move this around with G. And this is how we're going to be assigning colors. So I'll just drag that to the white right there. And now this is uh, completely blank, basically. If we select everything over here with A, tab into edit mode, make sure you select everything with A once again, and then select everything over here with A also. We can scale everything down to zero and drag that over to white to be blank. Now we can start assigning some colors. So I'll start with the skin color. Um, I'll add that to the head first. So I'll select this portion on the white and I'll make it green. I make most of my characters have green skin for whatever reason. And we can do the same thing for the body right here. So I'll shift select the head also and bring both of those into edit mode. And you can see we have these two separate islands right here. And this is how I like to match colors. You just select two things. And I know that the body is still white, so you can just select the white portion up here and drag that to the same spot down there. You know they're the same color now. We can select the, the arm and the head. We have the hand attached to the sleeve, so we just need to select the hand. And I'll hit Control plus to expand the selection until only the hand is selected. And you can select the head also with L, and we can just move this white portion once again over to this green spot. And that's how you can select individual faces. So I'll select the head and the eyelid. I'll make the eyelid maybe the same color, but 
one step darker right there. I'll do the same thing for the eye. So I'll just select this front spot right there and expand that until all the spots are selected that I want. So I want this to be the same color, but darker and more saturated. So I'll put it up here. Next, I'll do the hat and the boots, bring both of those into edit mode, and I'll make these like a brown color. So maybe orange and then uh, dark. I'll put it right here. The pants, I want to be similar. So I want it to be the same orange, but I want it to be more pale. So I'll bring that right about there. The button, I'll just make that gray. I'll select the shirt and the sleeves. You can select everything in there and just select the white portions. And I'm gonna make this like a pale yellow. So right about there. And then I want the buttons to be maybe the same color as the boots. So we can do the same thing now for the rake and the bucket. I'll just select everything and bring that over here maybe. And I want this up here to be brown. So I'll expand the selection with control plus and I'll make that dark brown also. So maybe about there. So now everything has color. Um, I just wanna clear up some of these shading issues. You can see that is still um, shaded flat as well as the boots. So I'll select the boots, right click, shade smooth. And to clear up these shading errors around here, you just want to go to object data properties right here and select auto smooth. So I'm gonna select everything actually and right click, shade smooth. And to make everything set as auto smooth, basically what you wanna do is hover over here and hold alt before you click it. And that will apply it to multiple objects. Otherwise it's only gonna work for the actively selected object. So now everything should be you know, smooth and auto smooth. So if you wanted some of these to have like a different roughness or whatnot, you can just go back over to the shader editor and just affect the roughness directly like that but that will change the roughness of everything over here. So if you wanted some of these to be slightly different, I'll select the things that are metal and make them look like metal. I'll select the rake, make that the active selection. I'll come over here and click this button right here. That will make a new material um, and it just copies the material that we already had. And then I'll come over here and add a second material. Make sure that is set to be the first one that we made. So we have the first one and then a copy because this one right here is partially wood. So I don't want, you know, the wooden part to be looking like metal, but we can select this uh, duplicate right here and just turn the metal all the way up. Um, but I want this to be applied to the bucket also. So that's why I selected all of these. You can just hit control L and link the materials. And to make the handle not look metallic, you can just come into edit mode and I still have the handle selected. So with that selected, click the first one right here, the original material, and then hit assign and that will assign what you have selected to the material over here. And now you should be able to just select these separately like this and change the values over here. So I'll make the metal a little more rough. And that's pretty much all I did to create this character. In the thumbnail image, I did rig the character, um, but I didn't do any complex rigging. I basically just rigged it to the point where I could um, start posing them around, but I wasn't planning on animating, so I didn't you know, get too complex with it. If you wanna see more rigging, I do have a rigging playlist. But, you know, when I make character videos like this, if you're all interested in me showing how I rig it also, or how I create the entire scene, just let me know in the comments and I'll consider um, including that in videos in the future. All right, that's it for this one. Make sure to check out the character modeling challenge on Discord for a chance to win that tablet from XP Pen. And if you want the file that I made in this video, as well as the file from the thumbnail, you can find that on Patreon. I'd like to thank my patrons for the support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.